Here's a story that's been making the rounds for a number of years. The woman was headed to her class reunion. She was dolled up prettily and not looking any the worse for wear despite the 25 years of time that had elapsed. Besides, she reminded herself, half of the people who show up are going to be old, fat, and 50. On the whole, I think I've made out okay. What do you say, toots? She smiled at herself in the rearview mirror. She, indeed, was not too bad a looker for her age. Still had all of her teeth, a full head of lustrous black hair, and not many lines or wrinkles around the eyes. Not yet, anyway. It's because I use an exfoliating gel scrub, she reminded herself. She turned into the filling station and decided she needed a quick jolt of something for the drive ahead. Just go for a Diet Coke. That's the ticket, she said to herself, parking at the double glass doors, rummaging through her purse and preparing to exit her vehicle. It was just then that she realized there was a rather handsome young man holding a briefcase and standing just a few feet from her car. He had an infectious grin, was well-dressed. Otherwise, she thought he might be some young drifter. Neither of them spoke. Then, each started to speak at the same time. The boy laughed. She thought, my, he really is quite good-looking. Hi, he said. My name is Chris. I'm, well, my car is in the shop, and I really need to get to an, uh, get to an appointment. Mind if I, uh... At first, she didn't know how to respond or even realize what he was asking her. Then she said, well, I'm on my way to a class reunion, but... He suddenly burst into a radiant, relieved grin. He threw up his arms and exclaimed, wow, you know, so am I. Wow, what are the odds we'd both be headed to the same place? Wow. Say, mind if I catch a ride with you while my car is being repaired? She put her hands to her lips uncertainly. But she was not one of those people who could easily say no. And he was so young and charming. Well, I suppose, she began, perplexed as to how to respond. Great, he exclaimed. Here, just let me go and straighten things out with the mechanic. And he opened up her car door, putting his briefcase in the back seat. He then said, my, it really is a stroke of good luck, me finding you, and both of us going to the same class reunion. What are the odds? I ask you, what are the odds? And smiling, he turned and walked back toward the garage, gesturing over his shoulder that he would be back in just a minute. Anxious and a little excited, she got back behind the wheel and waited and waited. But the young man must have been tied up on some minor business detail with the mechanic. At any rate, she started thinking to herself that the whole thing seemed fishy. He was much too young to be going to her class reunion, she surmised. And, well, you could always be charmed by a snake. She started up the car, put her foot to the gas, and headed on her way. Later, after the affair was over, after dinner and drinks and dancing and reminiscing with old friends that were now married, fat, bald, and well past their prime, she was headed out to the parking lot to get on the road home. She had soberly stuck to non-alcoholic punch all night. And, getting in her car, she spied the young man's briefcase. Oh my, she said to herself, I've run off with it, and I don't even know his name. She reached in the back, retrieved the briefcase. She was vaguely aware, in the back of her mind, of some small chatter that had gone on during the reunion. Something about an escaped inmate but she had been having too much fun to pay any real attention to it. She got the briefcase out, put it on the hood of her car, snapped it open. Inside, she found a roll of duct tape, a length of rope, a mask, a few rags that looked as if they might be used as gags, a bloody knife, some locks of hair,